this story was always, in my eyes, about the abuse of power. The techniques Harvey Weinstein used are, I think, important for us all to talk about because while they are extreme, they open a window into a set of tools available if you're that rich and that powerful and that bent on stopping dissent about you. As the world knows now, Harvey Weinstein was surrounded by allegations going back decades from women who said that he sexually harassed and assaulted them. Do you have any advice for a young girl moving to Hollywood? I'll get live with them. Uh, Harvey Weinstein invites you to a private party and it forces you to step down. They were described as an open secret for years in Hollywood, but they never broke, and there are a lot of reasons for that. In the fall of 2016, Harvey Weinstein became aware that a number of women were starting to talk. One of the precipitating events for that was Rose McGowan, the actress, tweeted, saying that Harvey Weinstein, she heavily implied without naming him, was, in her words, her rapist. She then set off a series of events that I think she could have never fathomed. Over the course of the past year, a woman calling herself Diana Phillip of Rubin Capital Partners reached out to Rose McGowan through a literary agency working with her. All seemed very legit. They offered her a great deal of money to speak at a gala kickoff event for a women's rights campaign that they were operating, right in Rose McGowan's area of interest. As it turns out, Rubin Capital Partners was a fake front company. She was, in fact, uh, a, an agent for Black Cube, this elite Israeli private intelligence firm, operating undercover using multiple identities to extract information. He assigned them to kill forthcoming stories about these allegations and to ferret out information about which women were talking. Rose McGowan was very much in the crosshairs here. She says that she was gaslit, that everybody lied to her, that she was living in a world of funhouse mirrors. They secretly recorded tens of hours of conversation with her. It reads like a spy novel, but it's all true. What's gonna happen to him now? One of the things we've been reporting on is the concerted criminal justice effort targeting Harvey Weinstein at this point. There are law enforcement agencies going after him um, in a very diligent way, I think partly to atone for the fact that the ball was dropped a number of times over the years where there could have been criminal proceedings. We talk about in our story, Ambra Badalana Gutierrez, an Italian model who had an allegation that uh, Harvey Weinstein groped her in 2015. I don't feel comfortable. I mean, don't have a fight with me. It's not my Please, I'm not going to do anything. I swear my children, please come in on everything. I'm a famous I'm, guy. I'm feeling please, very uncomfortable right please now. Please come in now and one minute. And if you want to leave, when the guy comes with my Why jacket, you can go. yesterday you touched my priest. No, please, I'm sorry. Just come on. I'm used to that. This machine that suppressed these allegations for so long had many moving parts, and one of them was legal in nature. When you look at the agreement Ambra Badalana Gutierrez signed, it is highly unusual. It specifically calls for the destruction of all evidence related to the incident. It has draconian penalties for breach. It uh, uh, had her sign a sworn affidavit saying that nothing chronicled in the recording that he admitted to in the recording ever happened to be released if she ever breached. You know, one lawyer I talked to with knowledge of that agreement said, this is one of the most usurious, unethical agreements I've ever seen. This New Yorker story was the very first to report sexual assault and, and rape at a point in time at which Harvey Weinstein was already saying, you know, this is just harassment, this isn't so bad, I'm gonna get treatment, this is gonna pass. It was always apparent to me how important this was. Every woman who spoke out in our coverage did an incredibly brave thing. It was painful personally, it put them at professional risk, they put a lot on the line. Thank you.
The fact that this story has had the impact that it has had is, I think, deeply tied to this moment in history. My own sister spoke out against a powerful man in Hollywood. That catalyzed a lot of conversation, but it was very different then. The women who came out against Bill Cosby also face a really aggressive level of public humiliation. And then there was Roger Ailes, and then there's been this cascade of men since. And I think what people have described as the Weinstein effect is actually a much broader swath of a moment in our culture and our conversation around these issues where finally, one story after another piling on has let people understand that they can speak and that there's strength in numbers that they didn't know existed before.